So in the previous video, we saw how a convolute function works with a two-dimensional array. But an image is basically consisting of three channels. And to use this convolute function, we have to pass every channel once and then get the results back. So to do it in a more simple manner, we can create another function which takes the image as a whole and does the convolution operation. So we'll see how it can be done. So we'll write the function def convolute image and we'll pass the three channel image here. The rest of the functions or the rest of the parameters remain same. That is kernel size, filter and stride. So inside the function, what we'll do is that we will split the image into three channels and then pass those channels inside the convolute function. So as you can see, image 3ch all the rows all the columns and 0th channel all the rows all the columns and the first channel all the rows all the columns and second channel so what we are doing is that we are passing this the three channels inside the convolute function after applying the zero padding then we pass it to the convolute function and the convolute function returns us the convoluted image so we'll receive convoluted image 0, 1 and 2, which are convoluted RGB channels of the image that we have passed here. Now the convoluted arrays will now be converted to a final image. That is, they have to be stacked together. And for this, we'll use the numpy arrays np.stack function. So in the stack function, we'll pass all the arrays that we need to stack that is 0, 1 and 2 and then the axis has to be passed. So in which axis do we want to stack them together? So if we pass axis is equal to 0, they will be stacked vertically. If we pass axis 1, they will be stacked horizontally. But if we pass axis is equal to 2, they will be stacked in the depth that is in the third dimension and this is what we are going to do here. Now, uh, so uh, the final image has been created and now to see or show the functions we'll uh, write plot.im show and we can put some title and then show and return the final image to the receiving variable now to call this function let's just try we'll write convolute image is equal to convolute convoluted image is equal to convolute image we'll pass the image uh, kernel size is 3 Gaussian blur and with stride of 1. So let us run and see what is the output. So as you can see this is the first channel. This is the second channel. Uh, this is the third channel. And now as you can see that in the final image we are getting this problematic image that is we cannot see anything. And this is the problem where normalization is important. So when we convolute the image and add all the uh, values, sometimes it goes out of the boundary and those uh, values are shown as white. To tackle the situation, we need to normalize the image. So we'll first print and, and see what type of values are inside the image. So if I print if I say plus, so as you can see, this is an ND array. We'll keep this aside for a moment. As you can see, the I which we have loaded is an N dimensional array. And the zeroth element, that is the corner element, is of type U and 8. So we have written a code to normalize the image, that is the uh, values from int 8 to a floating value. So now let us run the code and see what results do we get so as you can see that the values were initially the result of this was initially int 8 now it is float 64 so basically that we have normalized the image now let us try and run a command and let's see what is the output so this is our first channel and this is the second channel this is the third channel and now as we can see that all the convoluted images are now visible properly because we have normalized the data.